Hi kids and welcome to Chandler's Chapters. My name's Ian Chandler and today I'm going to be taking you through some of my favorite books that I liked as a kid. So feel free to follow along at home and when you hear this chime, turn the page. The book that we'll be reading today is called Bill and P and it's written and illustrated by Tommy DePaola. William Everett Crocodile lived on the banks of the River Nile with his mama. One day, Mama said, William Everett, now that you have nice crocodile teeth, we must go to the Mr. Hippo store and get you a toothbrush before you start school tomorrow. William Everett liked Mr. Hippo's store because it was full of things. He and Mama walked up one aisle and down another. They stopped in front of the toothbrush counter. You may choose your own toothbrush, William Everett, Mama said. William Everett looked and looked. Well, hi, said a toothbrush. What's your name? My name's William Everett. What's yours? Pete, said the toothbrush. I found the toothbrush I want, Mama said William Everett. His name is Pete. Good, said Mama. We can go home now. <laughs> so Pete became William Everett's toothbrush and his best friend, too. The next morning, Mama said, William Everett, my God, it's time to go to school. Oh, Mama, William said, I can't wait to read and write and learn all about crocodile history. Someday I'll be proud of you, William Everett. Someday, Mama said. Now, class, said Miss Ibis, today we are going to learn about the alphabet. Then we will be able to write our names. Now repeat after me. The little crocodiles repeated after Miss Ibis. A-B-C-D-E-F-G. They said the whole alphabet. They said the letters over and over again until they knew all of them by heart. Well, William Everett, said Mama, why did you learn in school today? William Everett, say the alphabet, said Pete. William Everett said every letter without mistake. Oh, William Everett, Mama said. That was beautiful. Oh. The next day, Miss Ibis taught the class how to write all the letters. The little crocodiles wrote the letters over and over until they could write them all by heart. And what did you learn today, William Everett? Mama asked. William Everett, write the letters, said Pete. William Everett wrote every letter without one mistake. You're so smart, William Everett, Mama said. Someday you'll be famous. Today, class, we are going to write our names, said Miss Ibis. She showed all the little crocodiles just what letters each one had in his or her name. 
They wrote and wrote and wrote and smiled and smiled and smiled. The letters spelled out Sam, Jane, John, Kay, Kate, Tom, Amy. They all wrote and smiled some more. That was all except William Everett. He had so many letters in his name that he kept forgetting at least one of them. Paul William Everett, big tears ran down his nose. Is something wrong, William Everett? Pete asked. I'll never learn how to write my name, he cried. It has too many letters. <laughs> now, now, William Everett. D stop, stop your cry said Pete. I think I can help you to write your name and not forget any letters. He took a pencil and wrote. Did you learn something today, William Everett? asked Mama. Yes, Mama, I learned to write my name, said William Everett. Oh, Bill! Mama beamed. One Saturday, when there was no school, Bill and Pete went down to the River Nile. I mean the Nile River, I mean the River Nile, and sat on the bank in the sun. A man on a bicycle went riding by and behind the bicycle were cages filled with crocodiles. I wonder what that's all about, said Bill in an accent that was unusual for him. Ah, that is the bad guy. And those crocodiles are on their way to Cairo to become suitcases, ah, sa, sa, sa said an old crocodile swimming by. Watch out, he doesn't get you! But, because Bill did not pick up on the intense foreshadowing, he did, the very next Saturday. Bill and Pete were fishing, and they didn't even hear the bad guy creep up behind them. The bad guy lassoed Bill and put him in a cage. He didn't pay any attention to Pete. Pete tried to peck the bad guy, but Pete was just too small. Aww. Poor Bill! He was on his way to Cairo. All he could do was think about suitcases for some reason. Brave Pete! He stayed close to his friend. What a guy. The bad guy put Bill in his garden and went into the house. Ha ha! Run me a nice hot tub, Jeeves, the bad guy said to his butler. I will take a bath before dinner. I got me another crocodile today, and I need a nap. Call me when the bath is ready, Maher. Tomorrow that crocodile becomes a suitcase, Maher. He added. Not if I have anything to say about it, said Pete. I'm more than just a toothbrush. And Pete picked the lock with his beak. Wow, what a guy. Quick, Bill, let's get out of here, said Pete. No, I'm quite mad, said Bill. I'm going to make sure there are no more crocodile suitcases I am.
Bill climbed the wall as Pete questioned the absurdity of a crocodile climbing a wall. He crept through the living room and into the bathroom, passing all of the bad man's neat Egyptian items, including his sarcophagi. Hey, hey, your bath's ready, sir, said Jeeves. Oh, this is a good part. And there was Bill, right with the rubber ducky. The bad guy jumped out of the window and didn't stop running all the way to Cairo. Which is a long way to run when you're naked. He doesn't even have his sunglasses or his towel. It's probably cold. I mean, all things considered, I mean... Oh, look, a nice dinner, said Pete. And am I hungry, said Bill. Mama, you don't have to cook dinner for us tonight, Bill said when they got home. And he told her what had happened. Oh, Bill. Oh, Pete, Mama exclaimed. What an adventure! I am so proud of you, too! Well, I hope you enjoyed today's Chandler's Chapters. And remember, you can tune in each week when we'll be reading another book. Until next time, you can rate, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you later!